Hi, John Hess here from FilmmakerIQ.com, your humble defender of 24 frames per second, here to react to, well, you read the title. I trekked two hours to Torrance, California and the AMC at Del Amo Fashion Center, which is one of the only 14 theaters in the state showing Ang Lee's Gemini Man in 120 frames per second. Now, I had skipped seeing the HFR version of the Hobbits' movies and Ang Lee's earlier attempt with Billy Lynn's long halftime walk. Besides the trivial historical inclusion of Cinerama films running at 26 FPS and a couple of Todd Ao versions of 80 Days Around the World and Oklahoma at 30 FPS, there is not a single other film in a frame rate above 24. So here was my chance to actually see in person in a theater this high frame rate crime against humanity. Now I watched it and then for my own edification I watched it again in the following day in 24 frames per second just so I could compare the two. Right now, those of you here are probably watching my review for one of two reasons. Either you are devotees of high frame rate and you're here to see me repent and say Ang Lee has converted me, or more likely you're here to see me rant and rage over the monstrosity and sacrilege that is high frame rate. Well, spoilers, I'm not going to do either, but I will answer this headline I see on Forbes right now. Is it the new face of cinema? The answer is is indefatigably no. But before I get to it, I'll just say this video is more of a technical review. I will end up talking about shots and plot points that may come off as a spoiler. So if you're dying to see this movie without any information, go see it now because it probably won't last long in theaters. Okay, let's talk Gemini Man. I really wanted to go into this with an open mind. Sure, I was ready with barbs about how painful it would be, but I did say and have been saying that high frame rate has its place in video games, documentaries, live broadcast sports, and 3D. And my screening was a 3D plus screening. So let's give it a chance. And so I did. Here's the thing. This super 120 frames per second in 3D looks very good. I mean, very, very, very good. The image was vibrant, crisp, tack sharp. It was like looking out a window. But what immediately struck me within the first few opening minutes was not the sense that I was witnessing something very new. What immediately struck me was how this looked like something I've already seen for years and years. It looked like really, really well shot video. It looks like a demo reel you would use to sell a high-end TV. And I've seen plenty of those kinds of demo reels. Before Filmmaker IQ got me really studying film, I was a 60i video producer, religiously attending the National Association of Broadcasters convention every year in Las Vegas to check out the latest in video technology and indulge in the other charms of that desert town. A Gemini Man would have fit right in with the Sony booth in 2009, showcasing the brilliant contrast and color using beautiful, sharp, noiseless vistas, wide pans, and super smooth, lifelike motion. Yes, it looks very, very good, but it doesn't look like a movie. And this is where the problems begin to arise. If this was nothing but beautiful vistas and candid shots of people in their daily lives, I might say this is a nice travelogue video. But when actors start showing up on screen, it becomes as clear as day that they're actors. Will Smith slides by in his charisma, but when he's on screen, there's never a moment where you feel like you're with somebody other than Will Smith. Unless it's Will Smith's stunt double, because at this frame rate, you can clearly tell. But we'll get into the action in a, in a second. Mary Elizabeth Winstead and Benedict Wong do what they can, but there's just not much there. But the real injustice was what this frame rate did to Clive Owen, Ralph Brown, and Linda Edmond. These are not inexperienced actors. They each have decades of experience but they came off as first timers, incredibly wooden and stiff. Like you could actually see them waiting their turn to deliver their line. Even Ilya Volok in his short turn as a Russian contact didn't feel convincing. It felt like an actor doing a Russian accent, even though the actor himself 
is Russian. <laughs> Perhaps another victim of high frame rate would be the character actor because something about that much information on screen makes it, makes it really easy to tell when someone's putting on an act. Now, when I rewatched the movie the following day in standard 24 frames per second, I was expecting to pick up those same cues, but I didn't. All those acting issues I had problems with before evaporated at 24. It was even more willing to, I was even more willing to buy Will Smith as a special assassin. Clive Owen, Ralph Brown, Linda Edmond performances, they didn't feel inadequate. They felt just fine. Now let's talk about the action because a common argument for high frame rate is that action needs it. Now first, the good. There are two shots where the HFR version impressed me well beyond the regular 24. The first was a shot from underwater of two dead bodies being tossed into the ocean. Now, something about the clarity and the motion works for underwater photography. I think watching a nature documentary on undersea life would be a great application of this high frame rate technology and dynamic range. The next shot where the HFR really impressed me was a short sequence involving a truck mounted minigun. You know, the kind with a super high rate of fire. The sequence was in slow motion, but seeing that coupled with really fast motion of the tracer rounds was something unique and different and really, really cool. The 24 frame per second version of that scene looked good, but it simply didn't have the wow factor that the 120 version does. But those are the only two shots where the HFR was better for me. There was a shot in the motorcycle chase scene through Cartagena, Colombia, that tracked right behind Will Smith's double that I thought looked really impressive in HFR. Turns out it looked even better in 24 frames per second. That's because the motion blur of 24 tends to exaggerate speed, where some of the motorcycle action at 124 FPS looks slow and carefully performed by stuntmen, it's like something you'd see at a show at uh, Universal Studios Hollywood. In 24, it looks faster and more chaotic. There's one shot where two bikes weave lines between each other. At 120 FPS, it looks rehearsed, but in 24, it doesn't. There's also a very impressive long shot they pull off following a bike down about three blocks. But with the HFR, you clearly see the digital zoom they did halfway through the shot, whereas in 24, it feels more subtle and more organic. And then there's the really bad. Early on, there's a close quarter fight scene with Mary Elizabeth Winstead and a henchman that looks so bad in high frame rate that I literally laughed out loud when it happened. Yes, I'm going to drop the term right now for the first time. It looked like a characteristic soap opera fight. Watch it again in 24 and it worked, it was a brutal fight scene. Now this is the same movie with the same lighting, just different frame rates. So yes, soap opera effect isn't a reference to lighting, it's the effect of frame rate on perception. Now in regards to the digital de-aging or digital cloning of Will Smith, that is a subject of most controversy, I personally bought the effect in both 120 frames a second and 24 frames a second. I really didn't grow up watching Fresh Prince of Bel Air, but when Junior Will Smith pops up for the first time in the movie in a rifle scope, some people did laugh out loud in the 24 uh, screening. What I will say is that the effect is kind of inconsistent from scene to scene. He doesn't always look the same, so I'll knock it for that. Ultimately, when I watched Gemini Man in 120 frames per second, I left the theater thinking it was a very shallow, poorly acted film that spread its premise way too thin. When I watched it again in 24 frames per second, it was still shallow, but it felt more competently made with some likable characters in the vein of a 1990s action film, a throwaway 90s action film. Still nothing special. In letter grades, it went from a D at 120 frames to a passable B minus. Now, I did eavesdrop on some other people after the HFR movie. They said it was disconcerting at first, but they got used to it. Now, fair enough, but I never once got used to it. And perhaps that's because I've seen so many movies and television demo videos that I can spot the difference. And that's why HFR will never replace 24 frames per second in cinema. It's because the people who go through the trouble to actually make films 
Do not simply get used to it. We obsess over every detail of the production, and that's why nobody outside two famous directors are still in favor of high frame rate. Well, the last time James Cameron was asked about it, he's backed off the HFR train considerably. With Gemini Man predicted to lose the studios about $60 million, the future of HFR is not looking good. Now, to sum it up, I would like to echo Stephen Dalton's review in The Hollywood Reporter. The hyper-real look of Gemini Man is immersive and richly detailed, but it also has the disconcerting effect of making a big-budget cinematic spectacle look like a vintage videotaped TV drama. To steal a line from Dolly Parton, it takes a lot of money to look this cheap. And I had to see it for myself. Thanks for checking out this video. If you liked it, you know what to do. Hit the like, subscribe, and ring that bell. Considering becoming a patron on Patreon, we are coming back after a bit of a hi hiatus, but I haven't given up. I'm still here. I've just been so busy. Anyhow, thank you for sticking with us. If you didn't like the video, well, check out our merch store and buy some living life at 24 frames per second, which you can ironically wear at a screening of Gemini Man, but order quickly because the way the reviews are going, this film won't be occupying that theater with a fancy projector screen for very long. In case you can't tell, frame rates have become one of those topics for me, and I have more in store on the subject in the future. Until next time, go out there, make something great. I'm John Hess. I'll see you at Filmmaker IQ.